today's message. I'm going to go ahead and pray. Father, we thank you for the word on today, God. We thank you for your word that has already been sealed and completed, God. It is in the pages of scripture, and all we have to do is open it up and hear from you. So, Lord, we ask that our uh, understanding will be fruitful on today, God. We ask that our ears will be opened on today, God, that you will uh, destroy the false ideologies of the world, God, and you will build up the truth that is only in Jesus Christ. So, God, we thank you for what will be stated on today, God. We ask that uh, people will have an ear to hear and those that will hear us live and those that will hear us across Facebook, across YouTube, across all the social media platforms, that they will be blessed as well. So we give you all the glory and praise in Jesus name. Amen. All right, guys. Well, uh, you, you guys know We've been in Luke, and since it's Father's Day, just like I did for Mother's Day, I'm just going to take a little step back uh, talking about Luke. I hope you don't mind. I hope you don't mind doing that. Don't worry. We'll go back into Luke. You guys will join us online uh, to do it as well. Uh, I don't know about you. I've been really enjoying the series in Luke. I hope you guys have been enjoying the series in Ephesians. If you, got a, if you haven't had a chance to listen to our Wednesday, you can find them up on Facebook those as well uh man that ephesian series is really really good i mean and i know i've been pounding you guys on this transformation but that's a big section it is a huge section on and i like what one minister said about that section he says there's so much confusion on what a christian is when you can literally see those verses and i don't know how you can't take that and i and it doesn't mean that god is expecting us to be perfect but you guys get it there should be a trajectory of our life that shows a transformation. And that's what we've been talking about. So remember, we talked about the worthy walk of love. Uh, then you know, what did we do on last Wednesday? We talked about the worthy walk of light, walking in knowledge, walking in truth, walking in reality. And this Wednesday, God willing, we'll talk about the worthy walk of wisdom, walking in wisdom. And then guess what comes right after that? That's when we go into the family portion of it, where it talks about the role of husband, role of wife, role of the children. I think uh, Kevin read Ephesians 6, 4. And we'll be talking about all that. So I just love expository preaching. I, it's, it's like, man, I wish we had always done it this way because it amazes me how each passage takes you. You just go where the text takes you. That's all you do. You know, like we, we talked about a little bit about abortion on uh, the, the end of last week's message, but it's amazing. That's where the text takes us because we're talking about the, um, the miracle conception of Christ. You see, and, and so I'm telling you guys, wait till we start really getting deeper into Luke. You're going to really, really enjoy it, especially when we get into the teachings of Jesus. You're going to really see them and it, it'll make sense. Like a lot of times we read the Gospels and sometimes Christ will be saying things. And you're like, OK, I'm kind of why did, why did he say that? You know, what does that have to do? with? Well, we're going to walk you through all that. And, and what you'll see is once we go through the entire Gospel of Luke. Every doctrine that we preach or that the apostles preach, it, Christ preached them. And we'll be talking more, more about that as well. And so, you know, I, I think it's just really good. Oh, I like that shirt, man. I'm going to have to get that from you. Good Lord. You don't come here with that shirt on like that. Yeah, I'm sorry. She had that brave shirt on. I was like, where'd she get that from? Okay. Amen. Amen. But yeah. <laughs> but we're going to just take a little slight detour about this. And I want to talk about some things, especially dealing with uh, uh, masculine. Man, this thing does this all the time. I wish I could. Sure. I'm here. Siri. I don't know how to cut Siri off. You know, but... Um, we're going to talk a little bit about masculinity on the day because it's Father's Day. And I, I, I got some stuff that I want to share with you guys that I think is going to be pretty, pretty good. So, uh, like I said, as you guys may be well aware, uh, gender identity is being assaulted and attacked by the insanity of the LGBTQIA plus movement. <laughs> Yeah, and that literally is what it is. Uh, <laughs> and so I, I want to talk a little bit about this, especially as it relates to this thing of masculinity. Because in today's gender fluidity culture, defining what it means to be a man can be a daunting task. And today it can even be offensive. So now think about it. We're living in a time where it can be absolutely offensive 
to even say what a man is. We're living in that day and age now. Also, listen to this. Male patriarchy and masculinity are not only being redefined, but now we're seeing these things be canceled within our culture on a continual basis. You guys may not be aware of this, but there is an assault on male patriarchy. There is an assault on male masculinity. That is, I mean, and it's, it's not just something that has recently happened. It's been on an ongoing thing. It's been an ongoing battle to assault male patriarchy. You guys know what I'm talking about when I say male patriarchy. Most societies are your men are the leaders and your women are the helpers. And that's how, always how society is. We, but but now think about it. what I just said today is offensive. If, if I said what I said on CNN or MSNBC or Fox, it, it could be offensive. Because how dare you say that? Because that's the society. But before, if you just think about it, especially all of us who know, when you, you think about some of the shows we used to watch in the 80s and those in the 70s. That's how the shows were designed. You had the man. He was always like the head. You had the woman. And then you had the children. I mean, that was like a known thing. I mean, just as recent as a Cosby show, you, everybody knew Bill Cosby ran the household. But you also knew that Felicia Rashad had just as much respect in it. But there was never, I don't know about you guys, there was never no thing where I thought, man, Felicia running that man. Uh, uh, what's her name? Miss Cosby. I forgot her, what her name was on the show. Claire. She running the whole show. That never thought about it. Growing up watching Family Ties or, or watching, uh, 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 I forgot the other one. There was a couple of more that they had, you know. Uh, 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 you know, even if you go back to the old Archie Bunkers, you know, and those things. You see, th these shows were. Uh, the gym, you said the Jeffersons. <laughs> That would be canceled, man. I mean, you wouldn't even watch it. But, you know, remember Good Times? Yeah, I remember watching Good Times where, man, I mean, uh, James Evans, he would scare me. You know, cause even though he was a little TV dad, but he was just, didn't know how he acted in that show. Boy, you knew he didn't play, you know. But then they started coming out with, you know, uh, uh, what's happening now. We got it, you know, as a single mom with Raj and all that stuff and those things there. And the and culture began to change. But now you don't even see these shows like this. You know, I'll never forget uh, uh, back when George Bush, uh, uh, George H. Bush was the president. Dan Quayle was the vice president. And there was a show called Murphy Brown. And in that show, Murphy, Murphy Brown got pregnant and she was going to have a baby on the show. And it was the first time that she would, that the, the television would air a, a, a woman having a baby out of wedlock. And do y'all remember Dan Quayle made a comment, now we know, all know about the tomato thing, he made, you know, he spelled the word wrong, but he made this comment, which was, if we allow her to do this, it's going to open up a floodgate of, of, of television shows where it's going to kind of destroy the fabric of family. If we allow this woman to have a baby out of wedlock, like, what are we telling our children? They laughed him off the stage. You know, think about it. How, how often do you hear anything about Dan Quayle? <laughs> Nothing, because that was an embarrassment. But was the man right? Look at what happened after that. Name me a show today that isn't just absolutely debased and deplorable. Not, not even just the shows, the commercials. The commercials, you know. And so that's crazy. You know, when you got the CDC putting out documents telling people how to have sex with monkeypox, you know you've left the reservations. How to help gays have sex while they have monkeypox. You know, it, this is ridiculous. This is where we are in society now. You know, and, 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 and I think when we look at this, we got to talk about it. Let me give you some things. And I gave you this on the last time we were together, but I want you to hear this because you may have forgot it. On 2017, in the article of Forbes, uh, it was an article entitled, and I, I want to go over these again, seven reasons why millennial men are reinventing masculinity. Millennial men. Now, when you think about the millennials, you're talking about people that are typically born from uh, around 1983, 1984, all the way up to 2000. So those are these. Th 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 that's what the article is there writing about. Now, listen to this. Listen to what the article said. It said that masculinity molded to us by, by the older generations, which held that men shouldn't express emotions, be sensitive and show vulnerability is fading. 
In other words, what this article talked about is they're recognizing a trend in society where masculinity that was defined as men not showing emotion or men being not being sensitive or men being more vulnerable or not being vulnerable. That is fading. And now you're having a, a masculinity be defined by men who are more emotional, men who are more sensitive. Men who are more vulnerable. They say that's what you're starting to see now in society. And the New York Times bestselling author, Lewis Howes, in his book called The Mask of Masculinity, he gave seven reasons why millennial men are, listen to this word, seven reasons why millennial men are is sensitive and a masculinity that is more vulnerable. Now, I know that says, well, what's wrong with that? There's some huge things because what type of emotions are these are men expressing more of? That's why you see all this violence and anger going on with these. You know, think about it. People are just shooting for. Them. Yeah. Well, where is that coming from? I mean, they, you know, now women shoot people too, but you mostly hear this rage, rage with these men. You know, you nowadays you don't even want to say anything to somebody because you don't know if they'll pull out a gun and shoot you. That's right. Now think, of it, I'm saying you don't know what these people will do. How about being more sensitive? That can be a danger right there because you know men are the ones that's supposed to hold the family up And if I'm over there crying and I can't get it together What is that gonna do for my whole family? And then being vulnerable again, am I saying we're not to be vulnerable? No, but we got to be careful with that. You see you want to test it? Go ahead Oh uh, all right, all right, we're back, we're back. Hopefully, the live feed is working. My, li my wife is gonna test it out to see if we were getting that static that we were getting before, and uh, we'll see if, if, if it is, and if we're still getting that static, we, you may just have to wait till we put it up on the YouTube to do it as well, so I'll, uh, I'll wait until we get it. How's it doing, Lindsay? Yeah, but when, when you took the mic out, it still had the static when you unplugged it. Yeah. See, it ain't even plugged up and you still hear the static. You don't hear it no more? Okay. Well, let me see it. <clears throat> yeah, it must be the mic, guys. Okay. Let's try, try one more time. Put it in there. And then if not, then we're going to go on. Yeah, I may just have to do it without the mic. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two. Yeah, all right. Take the mic out. Okay. All right. Hey, sorry about that, guys. Sorry we had to. Kind of fumble around here, but we want to make sure we get it right. We don't know what that static is. It's coming from that mic. So we'll have to look into that. But uh, I'm going to pick back up where I started off at as well, if you guys don't mind. Uh, so again, I was talking about the, two, the 2017 article from Forbes, uh, which gave seven reasons why millennial men are reinventing masculinity. And it started off the article by saying that masculinity molded to us by older generations which held that men shouldn't express emotions be sensitive and show vulnerability is fading and then it went on to talk about a book by lewis house taught and that book was entitled the mask of masculinity and that book gave seven reasons why millennial men are reinventing and redefining what it means to be a man now please pick up on the words there reinventing and redefining what it means to be a man. Now think about it. If we're reinventing it or redefining it, so that's telling us that how it was before, it wasn't necessarily correct. Now we got it. You know, that's like when people try to say, well, you know, uh, here's what the Bible is saying about this verse. And man, I've never seen that before. And I'm telling you, man, nobody ever preached this before. So let me get this straight. So the 2000 years the church has existed. Now you in 2022 have got the truth of that verse. Nobody else got it. So what did everybody else do when they read it? They just was lost. That doesn't make any sense. You know, I like what one person said, uh, and I can't forget who it, it was. It John MacArthur, but it may have been. Um, I can't remember who the minister is. It says when you think about no, it was Daryl Harrison. He was like, truth is always old, 
it's never new. Mm. That's good. You get it? In other words, there's, it, 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 truth by what it is is old. Or else it's not truth. Because if you say, no, this is new. Well, then what was everybody else doing? Because truth is something that has always been. Mm -hmm. You get it? It's like that, that's how you have to think about it. That's why truth can only really come from God. And that's why also, too, as we get older, we tend to, tend to be more anchored in truth because we've lived a long time to see all of these things kind of play themselves out. You follow what I mean? So, so, so that's why if you're, if you're a young person, how are you going to tell an old person what truth is? It doesn't make any sense. Oh, cause, oh, let me get this straight. You just you just figured it out. I guess we all didn't know for the past uh, 4,000 years people have been alive. They know this until now we get the young people today who can tell us what the truth is. So now, thank God we got this article who can tell us how to, how what men are. Because obviously Abraham didn't know it. Obviously Noah didn't know what a man was. Man, David didn't know. Jesus didn't even know because he didn't have that article. But now that we have this article, we can now understand what men are. And here's the seven reasons he gives. Number one, men are becoming more self-aware. And men are becoming more in touch with their feelings. Now again, all this sounds good. All this sounds good. Men are becoming more self-aware. Men are becoming more in touch with their feelings. But when we understand masculinity from a biblical perspective, that can be very dangerous because men express their feelings entirely different than how women express their feelings. You follow what I mean? Do you know that God placed in, in men to be, there's a reason why men express anger a little bit more different or a little bit, uh, because it, it is designed by us to be more in a protective zone. So when our family is being attacked, when our children are being attacked, something rises up in us to want to protect. But what happens if that's no longer needed anymore? Where's all that aggression going? Where's all that anger going? You follow what I mean? You see, so now they're saying, no, you need to be in touch with your feelings. No, there's not a scripture verse that says you need to get in touch with your feelings. Not a single verse that says that. Not a single verse. You can't ever find it. You can't even find it for women. There's no verse that said get in touch with your feelings. Not, not one. Not one. That's a dangerous path. Number two, that's a dangerous path. Lindsay listens to a, a young lady. She does a ministry for women. And she's, I think she's seen that was woven into, give me a look. That was actually woven into the culture. And then, guys, there's the institution of Pride Month for the entire month of June. Now, I want you to follow this. I want you to hear this. I had to, I just copied and pasted this. Because to kick off the celebration of sin and debauchery, President Biden gave an official proclamation of Pride Month on May 31st, 2022. Here's what President Biden said. During lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, and intersex, commonly known as LGBTQI+, Pride Month, we reflect on the progress we have made as a nation in, in the fight for justice, inclusion, and equality while reaffirming our commitment to do more to support the LGBTQ. IA plus rights at home and abroad. I often say, this is Biden still speaking, that America can be defined by one word, possibilities. This month, we celebrate generations of LGBTQIA plus people who have fought to make possibilities of our nations real for every American. This month, we remind the LGBTQIA plus community that they are loved and cherished. My administration sees you for who you really are, deserving of dignity, respect and support. As I said in my State of the Union address, especially to our younger trans gender Americans, I will always have your back as your president so that you can be yourself and reach your God-given potential. Oh, <laughs> One thing should have jumped off the page. Reach your God-given potential. 
tendency, guys, to affirm any type of sin, including homosexuality and transgenderism, not only destroys one's God given potential, but it ultimately damns them to eternal hell. You can't affirm that. You, you, you can't talk about God's given potential as if that's an issue. That's a purpose of God, given, given that, that these type of sins. This can be seen in the multiple events of pride parades that have transsexuals, drag queens, and cross dressers wearing fake exposed breasts, strap on dildos, and lewd sexual acts all for the enjoyment of kids. Wow. So guys, we can safely say that the executive branch is fully supportive of the destruction of our society. Well, how about the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, who made a surprise visit on a famous drag queen show of RuPaul's, and she said this, It is my honor to be here. Your freedom of expression of yourself in drag is what America is all about. What a dumb statement. So America is all about drag. Drag. Guys, look, the Speaker of the House is the third person in line for the presidency and the most powerful individual in the legislative branch. So that means the legislative branch, they affirm it. Wow. And get this, on June 26, 2015, the U.S. Supreme Court struck down all state bans on same-sex marriage and legalized it in all 50 states. In the landmark case called Ober, uh, Obergefell and Hodges versus Hodges in 2015, it was argued before the court of the unconstitutionality of the states opposing or refusing to honor same sex marriages honored in other states. And guess how they framed it? They used the 14th Amendment as the argument. Now, I want you guys to pay attention to this because I want you guys to follow this thing because you will always hear something about the 14th Amendment. And most people don't know what the 14th Amendment is. You, you don't know when you hear it, but you just really don't know it. The 14th Amendment was one of the Reconstruction Amendments following the aftermath of the Civil War. It was adopted on July the 9th, 1868, and it addresses citizenship rights and equal protection under the law. That's what it does. The 14th Amendment was proposed by radical Republican leaders to ensure the civil rights of the now freed former slaves. I bet you didn't know that. You want to know who came up with the 14th Amendment? It was a civil rights amendment and it was crafted by Republicans who wanted these free slaves to be counted as citizens now and to have equal rights under the law. It was the Democrats that opposed the 14th Amendment. Now, I want you to think about that. Now, think about how things have flipped now. Now, this, this single amendment has been used to legalize numerous sins within the culture, namely the murder of innocent children in the womb, which is abortion. That was in 1973. They, Roe v. Wade used the same 14th Amendment and gay marriage. They used the 14th Amendment to, to, to use that. In other words, they said this amendment was written out. The whole purpose of the amendment was that the free slaves should be citizens. Y'all follow that? That was the whole thing. And come on, stick with the argument. The whole goal was that the 14th Amendment was written so that it could give equal protection of people under the law. It could provide due process for people under the law. That was the purpose of the amendment. This is so important that you get this. But that same amendment was now used to say, well, if you're going to give equal protection of slaves under the law, well, how come we can't have equal protection of people who want to abort their babies? How can we can't have equal protection for gays? You see how the argument is framed. And this is why this will help you. This is why issues like the LGBTQIA plus and abortion rights have always been linked to civil rights. And it's always been linked to black to the black community and human rights. This is why they make the statement. If they do away with Roe v. Wade on a federal level, then guess what? Blacks, you better be afraid because they can come and take away your rights. Because the way it's crafted, that that movement is linked with blacks. Do you get it? Because you're, you're, you're having it under the umbrella of the 14th Amendment. I thought that was interesting because I would always wonder, 
how come you're always linking this gay stuff to black people? Black rights. <laughs> Well, if you understand the 14th Amendment, you see it. This is why they're telling you that if abortion is overturned, guess what? They can overturn your, your black's right to vote. Because they, they know that most blacks don't understand the 14th Amendment, and that's the argument that was used to support all of those things. You get it, guys? Even though if you think about it, we're talking about us being black. Have, wanting to be equal citizens. We're born black. That's a whole different thing. We're not talking about people who choose to do something. You act like we chose to be black. Even if you think about the former slaves, did they choose to come here? Did they choose to, to be a slave? No. So that's a whole different argument. But now you're using that argument to support people who make a lifestyle of sin. I hope you guys can hear this. So, mm -hmm. what would the general tank come in? Oh, we're going to talk about that. Because, <laughs> well, again, we bring up all of these different arguments with the Juneteenth and, you know, which had to do with that slaughtering that happened over uh, uh, that community in Tulsa. And, 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 and we, we set these things to honor this, but all those things, no, that's, that's just to appease black people to think we got something, even though we don't have anything. I'll, I'll deal with that. But I hope you're seeing how each branch supports sin. Executive, legislative, and judicial. Proverbs 14, 34 says, Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. You got to hear this, guys. Because here, here's the question. How did we get here? Well, of course, it begins when a nation no longer seeks to exalt and affirm, and affirm righteousness, but now exalts and affirms sin while assaulting and attacking righteousness. You get it? What happens when a nation no longer exalts righteousness? They exalt sin, but they don't just exalt sin, mama. They attack righteousness. You get it, Nancy? It's not just exalting sin. That's one problem. But now you attacking righteousness. So if I say, well, I'm against that movement, the whole LGBTQ. Now, what they do is their business. I'm not trying to kill them all. I, what they do is their business. But why are you trying to push all of that on me? That's the question that most people, oh, you're attacked. You can't say that. Because what you found out was it wasn't just about them being accepted. It was much deeper than that. It's a cultural thing that you want to push down on everybody. And that's what we mean by exalting sin. That's what, we, that's what we're talking about here. So it's not just an exalting of sin, it's an attack on righteousness. Listen to this, guys. The, the assault on righteousness begins when a nation no longer seeks to honor and exalt God. I want you to see how we got here. But now seeks to honor and exalt man. We always read Romans 1. Because Romans 1 is where you have to start. Romans 1, 18 through 23. It says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. That's where it begins. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and all unrighteousness. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all un uh, 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 ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. Please get that. They suppress it. They, su they know the truth, mom, but they suppress it. I don't want to believe that. Okay, now follow this. For what can be known about God is plain to them. Well, how is that? Because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, please listen, has been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made so that they are without excuse. So now, follow this. How has God revealed himself to everybody? Nobody is going to be without excuse. It's a simple answer through creation. You want to know how you know it's to God? Look out there and look at that sun. Y'all get it? Cause and effect. That's right. So nobody will be able to stand before God and say, I didn't know you existed. That's a lie. That is a lie. 
Because God says, for what is, he's invisible, but how is he made visible? How is he made known to everybody? It's called natural theology, which you can't get saved by natural theology, but natural theology states that everyone can know God just by creation. That's right. Just by you being a human. <laughs> You know that there has to be a God. So that's the that's what so what happens if you want to start exalting sin? First, you remove God out of the culture. Me and Lindsay were talking about this. I remember being in school, especially in middle school, when you would get to science, and I think it was earth science. That's uh, 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 that you start talking about. And 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 they would go over the theories of life, the origins of life. I remember when the Big Bang and evolution was taught as a theory. It was one of the theories you learned. If you guys remember, creation was also in the book. <laughs> Do you know that's not even taught anymore? That's not even an option to teach a kid in public education anything about creation. Right now, listen, in science, evolution and the Big Bang, that's a fact. You have to come home and tell your kids that's a lie. <laughs> There are no longer theories anymore. So please follow this, guys. We're talking about how do you get to where you're going? You don't just look at the LGBTQ. You don't look at the abortion stuff. How do you get there? First, you start abandoning God. Will we not agree our culture has done that pretty well? God is no longer in the public discourse. Y'all do remember that. Y'all do know that. You say something as simple as getting the Ten Commandments removed, uh, prayer getting removed out of school, all this stuff matters. This is how you begin the slippery slope because when prayer was removed out of school, I think that was in the 60s, then guess what began to end up happening? What, what, what took off after that? That's when you had the sexual revolution. That's when you had the free love, the hippie. Well, isn't that amazing? Because guess what the next thing says? The destruction of a society continues as the culture falls into sexual debauchery. Listen to what it goes on to say in Romans 1 24. No, I'm sorry. Oh, let's go. Let's go. We got to keep reading the thing. I'm sorry. Go back to uh, Romans 1, looking for verse 21. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God. That's what we're talking about. You no longer honor him as God and give thanks to him, but you become futile in your thinking. Your foolish heart is darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for uh, 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 immortal God for images resembling mortal man and birds and animals and creeping things. You see the progression. You no longer honor and exalt God. Now you honor man. And so now the next step of the slide is sexual debauchery. That's in Romans 1. Listen to verse 24. Therefore, now what is the therefore for grammatically? Because you no longer honor God, because, no, because you no longer want to give him thanks, you claim yourself wise, now you're really a fool. You think you know everything, but you don't know nothing. We know that. Anybody that's a parent, you know, your child think they know everything. You're like, boy, you about as dumb as you. you don't know what you're talking about. Jesus. Have you ever had a conversation with somebody? They, they think they know what they're talking about. And you're like, you don't know what you're talking about. You, 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 you see what I mean? This is what that verse is saying. Claiming to be wise, they become fools. Mm. Their foolish heart is darkened. And now you go to verse 24. Therefore, God gave them up in the lust of their hearts to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves. Because they exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forevermore. Look, God gives the culture up to its own passions and desires, no matter how debased they are. It begins with a overly sexualized culture that seeks to dishonor their own bodies among themselves because now man is God. See, how do we get here? How do we get to what we see today? How do we get here, Uncle Charles? How do we get here? Well, it begins with removing God out of the culture. And then the next slide is an overly sexualized culture. Now, here's the deal. That's the slick one. We want to go right to the homosexuality, but the slick one is the overly sexualized culture because the church was silent on all of that. What do I mean by that? I remember, you remember growing up when the shows changed. I remember when you could come home and you did watch videos, but they would make the real bad videos. They came on late at night. 
Okay, when mom and them wanted to watch, if you wanted to watch Dynasty, a Falcon Crest, a, a Knox Landing, Knox Landing came on at 10. Mm -hmm. The child's supposed to be asleep when that's on. Why do you think they put the soap operas on when? In the daytime. So the kid's supposed to be at school. But what happened when now we saw things change to where now the shows were put right out there. It was an overly sexualized culture. Do you realize there was a point where the church stopped talking about divorce? I remember uh, when we were children growing up, remember the whole thing, one of the big conversations in the church was shacking. Y'all gotta remember when these arguments were running rampant in the church about shacking. Is shacking wrong? But do you remember when the church is no longer talk, talking about it no more? Because the church just gave up, everybody shacking. Everybody shacking. Do you know at one point, man, you could not have your child christened if you were not married? That's true. Churches didn't do that. Are you are you in, are you in the uh, husband? Oh no, not mad. I had the baby. He, he can't get crazy because you, you out of order. Man, you do that now. You church probably get sued. <laughs> oh, you gotta hear what I'm saying. See, it, it, it starts there. First, you dishonor God, and now you go to this overly sexualized culture. And we saw that. We saw an over. Guess what? Porn took over in the church. Couldn't say nothing about it no more because guess what? You lose a lot of deacons and leaders. It was a study came out that the, the, the porn industry and, and certain hotels, they loved it when pastors would have conventions. Because the hotels say they would make so much money on the pastors renting the porn. And the church got silent. The church got silent on divorce. Hey, look at man. Everybody gonna get it. So what? What are we gonna say something about it? What I'm trying to show you is, you say how we get here. We want to just go and sit there and blame. Because me and Mama always had these conversations when we talk about how we see this generation Y today. Mama know what I tell her. I said it goes back to us, X's. We're the parents of the Y's. <laughs> and, and you say, well, it's y'all for oh, y'all the baby boomers. Y'all our parents, <laughs> and y'all left the bridges. Every generation took us to where we are today. You get it? It doesn't just happen by, you don't have by accident now where you have a man competing against women and, 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 and swimming. That doesn't happen by accident. That's a culture that follows a slippery slide. And I'm trying to show you, the Bible gives us the slide. It starts with first, you no longer honor and give thanks to God. Then it leads to an overly sexualized culture. It says God gave them up to in the lust or the desires of their own heart and impurity to the point where now they're dishonoring their bodies among themselves. That's why porn was such a big thing because porn was the dishonoring of your body among yourselves. What should be considered as being only in the confines in bed is now broadcast for everybody to see. That's a dishonoring of your body. That's where it begins. Well, you say, who? Well, maybe it stops there. No, <laughs> because the scripture goes on. After you have an overly sexualized culture, the destruction of the society continues to slide into a more perverse sexual debauchery. That's verses 26 to 27 in Romans 1. Listen to what it says. For this reason... God gave them up to dishonorable passions for their women exchange natural relations for those that are contrary to nature and the men likewise gave up natural relations with women and were consumed with passion for one another. Men committing shameless acts with men and receiving in themselves the due penalty for their error. How can nobody read that and not know what they're talking about? Did, did y'all get this verse? That, you should not have to even exegete what that means. Mama, listen to what it says. For, for they gave up to dishonorable passions. Well, what's the dishonorable passions? For the women exchanged natural relations for those that are contrary to nature. What would be a natural relation among women? Women with men. Now they exchange that for a, a, a relationship that's unnatural. That's lesbianism. And listen to this, Uncle Charles, verse 7. And the men, likewise, gave up natural relations with women and were consumed with passion for one another. 
Men committing shameless acts with men and receiving in themselves the due penalty for their error. So after the overlying sexual culture, it leads to now God giving the culture up to dishonorable passions. The word dishonorable passions literally mean the most vile and shameful desires, which are now characterized as we got a name for it, the LGBTQIA+. <laughs> All of that stands for lesbianism, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, intersexual, asexual. Uh, plus is the literally I looked up what the plus was. That's the endless number of genders there can be. Wow. So you say, well, that's got to be the worst. No. Because the final destruction is solidified as God gives the culture up to pure mom insanity. This is what it says in verse 28. And since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a debased mind to do what ought not to be done. <laughs> Somebody says, well, what is that? What is a, a reprobate mind? That is a, I like how MacArthur explains it. Very simple, a mind that does not function. <laughs> Come on, guys. Can we just be honest as Christians? Are we looking at our society today? Oh, come on, guys. Let's just be honest. It doesn't make sense. It's a documentary that Matt Walsh did, and, and it's on their thing. Me and Lindsay, we've been wanting to watch, but you got to pay for the subscription. But we've been watching little pockets of it. It, it, the documentary called What is a Woman? And he went around asking women, what is a woman? And, and, and the, the women couldn't even answer the question. Like, he would ask the question, can I ask you something? What's a woman? And the women would be like, that's what you're doing. You got a mind who don't work right. Literally. Do you know what it says in the Oxford Dictionary of what a woman is, definition of a woman? Literally, it says a female adult. Mm -hmm. That's all it says. Now you can't even answer that question. That's a mind that doesn't work right. See, we laugh at what we saw with Katanji Brown and, and the Supreme Court Justice, because she is a Supreme Court Justice. We laugh at that. But that's huge. When a simple question, can you define a woman to me? N no, I can't. I'm not a biologist. Guys, and her daughter sitting right behind her. So that means you can't even define her. I can't define anything. And that's why you have the joke running around. Well, what is a dog? I don't know. I'm not a zoologist. You know, what is a hamburger? I don't know. I'm not a nutritionist. You know, it's like, well, then what can we define? This is what we talk about with a debased mind. I hope you guys are sticking with me here. Because now, when you talk about a debased mind, this is a nation that has approved now anywhere between 68 to 75 terms that now describe gender identity and gender expression. Are y'all listening? Oh, uh, hit, hit yourself. I want you to hear this. You got to hear this. You got to hear this. According to Healthline, gender, here's what it says, quote, gender and sex actually refer to two separate things. Gender is an identity, which is your personal sense of who you are, while sex refers to biology, I'm sorry, biological and physiological characteristics, such as your genitals, hormones, and chromosomes. Many people grew up with a simplistic idea of gender and sex, that there are only two sexes, male and female, that match two genders, man and woman woman but in reality neither gender nor sex is binary so in other words they're telling us that how we grew up in a simplistic world where the sexes were what male and female and the gender was man and woman they said no in reality that's not true now, look at the play on words in reality that's not true in reality, that's not true. So please enlighten me, Healthline. What is true? They go on to say your gender identity is, per is your personal sense of self. It is how you as an individual conceptualizes your own gender. 
Whereas gender, now listen to this. Please see if you get confused. I'm going to read it again. Your gender identity is your personal sense of self. It is how you, as an individual, conceptualizes your own gender. Whereas your gender expression is how you express your gender identity, while your gender presentation is how you present your gender, whether you intend to or not, externally. Anybody confused? <laughs> Do you know a guy said that he says we're coming to a point, Uncle Isaac, where you're gonna need a PhD to be able to define who anybody is. This guy says a gender identity is your own personal sense of who you are. It's who you say you are. But your gender expression is how you express your gender identity, which means you can say, okay, I'm this, but I'm expressing myself something totally different. But then you have your gender presentation. It's how you choose to present your gender expression and your gender identity. This is ridiculous. This is absolutely lunacy on steroids, guys. But what's the difference between the expression and the representation? Like it, what? Man, oh, well, well, listen to this. This is when you go to the terms. Number one, it starts off with something called cis norm normativity. This is the assumption that a person identifies with the sex and gender that they were assigned with at birth. So that's where it all begins. When you're born, the doctor, this is what the article says. What we know now is when you're born, the doctor assigns you a gender, but he may not really know what you are. That's where it starts. So that's what that's why now the new language is when you go to the doctor, they're going to ask you on the form when they put under gender, what were you assigned when you were born? Uh huh? And so you're gonna check woman, man, oh, oh, you know. What do you identify as now? Woman? What is your sex? It, it, it is because now this is what you go because now whatever you were assigned with is not right it may not be right so the doctor just he made an assumption they, they literally guys they're saying the doctor made an assumption that Skylar was a girl that's an assumption right now because now we have to go into this. She could be a gender. This is someone who doesn't identify or, or with an idea or experience of having a gender. Mm -hmm. So you have an agender person. This is somebody who doesn't even identify as a gender. And I'm almost done. Then you got, uh, uh, you got to hear some of this, uh, Lindsay. Uh, you have bi-gender. This term describes someone who identifies as two distinct genders. Bi-gender indicates the number of gender identities someone has. So a bi-gender person can be two or three genders. You have body dysphoria. Body dysphoria is different from body dysphoric disorder. Body dysphoria refers to a specific, specific type of gender dysphoria that manifests itself as a discomfort as who, who, what your body is. So, so you have a discomfort for being a woman because you're not really a woman. So you don't like your body because you like in a woman's body, but you, you have a body dysphoria where you don't like your body because you don't think you're a woman. Anybody confused? Oh, then you have cisgender. Cisgender is a term, I'm not even going to read all of them. Cisgender is a term used to describe people who exclusively identify with the sex and the gender they were assigned to as birth. So all of us are cisgender. <laughs> Lindsay, you're not a woman. You are cisgender. That means Lindsay has chosen to, to express herself and identify herself as her assigned gender she was given at birth. Kevin, you, you're choosing to express yourself as your assigned gender. That is Kevin's choice. He's, he's not that. He's not a male. But that's what he's choosing to express himself as. Come on, are you guys hearing this? So you're cisgender, Nancy. You know, then you have what's known as demi-boy, demi-gender, demi-girl. 
This is an umbrella term that includes all non-binary gender identities and uses the prefix demi to indicate the experience of having a partial identity with another group by being connected to the other one. <laughs> this is so confusing. So now you're a demi girl. This is ridiculous. And then, Auntie, this is so. Uh, the gender identity, there are like 40 of them. You have female of center. Uh, you have female presenting. You have femi. You have female to male. You have gender apathetic. You have gender binary, gender dysphoria, gender expansive, gender expression, gender identity, gender neutral pronouns. The gender neutral pronouns are they, them, and thus. Then you have Z, Zim, and Zer. Then you have XM, Zers, and th I, this is what it, these are all the pronouns you can go by. You can say my pronouns are Z, Zim, and there. You have gender non-conforming, gender normatively, gender presentation, gender questioning, gender roles, gender variant, gender fluid. Gen I ain't gonna read that one because that's gender F-U-C-K. I mean, that's ridiculous. Gender queer, gender void, gray gender. That's too much. Yeah. Then you get into the non-binary language, which is intergender, intersex, Mask, masculine presenting, misgender, male to female, multigender, non-binary, uh, novigender, omnigender, pangender, polygender. <laughs> Let me close. <laughs> 68 to 75. So what? Yes. 68 to 75. Who came up with this? Who came up with all this? In one interview, they asked a young lady in the interview, what do you go by? She says, I am a queer, non-binary, cisgender mask. Uh, she gave like five different categories and then she says, but I didn't know what I was before at first I thought I was trans, but then I wasn't trans but then I knew I thought I was bisexual. You were like, are you guys kidding me? <laughs> guys at the end of the day as I get ready to close and I'm gonna talk about one scripture and this is it because this is enough yeah. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 tells us this. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, for though we walk in the flesh, we are not war raging war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. What are we doing, guys? We are destroying arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and taking every thought captive to obey Christ. Guys, I want to talk about this because... We got to be able to stand firm against this foolishness. Don't give in to this talk. But I, and I'm saying this preaching to the choir, but do you know our children? We didn't understand any of this. I guarantee you, if you talk to our children, you go talk to Jordan, you talk to Rama, you talk to your kids. Some of this they've heard. Now, they don't identify as this, but they understand the language. Because this is what our kids are getting an onslaught of. And they're going after the children. They're literally going after the children. This is what they are teaching your children in school. This is what they're weaving into the culture to where now you don't have to identify with whatever you were assigned to when you were born. And guys, that's what we've been talking about as we close. Let's look at this one scripture, which I think says it all. It's in Genesis chapter one, verse 27. Just, you know it, guys. It says, so somebody says, well, what's the whole gender argument? What are we talking about? Listen to this. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Isn't that something? Are y'all hearing that? Do y'all get what that verse is saying? I'm going to read it again. So God created man in his own image. The word there for man is not saying God created a male. Do y'all get that? When it says God created man, what do you think he's talking about there? God created what? Mankind. Remember, me, Lindsay, all of us, we are a kind of creation that God created. What does God call our kind? He calls it mankind. You get it? 
So it says when God created man in his own image, who is he talking about? He's talking about mankind. God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So what this means is God created mankind in his own image and then he categorized mankind in two categories, male and female. You got to get that. This is where you start the argument off with. This is where it starts right there. In this single verse, God establishes the binary definition of mankind. Binary means two. What is the binary definition of mankind? It is a kind that is both male and female. It is not a genderless kind. That's what we have to understand. And so when we start talking about masculinity or we deal with femininity, we're literally talking about the characteristics and the qualities that God placed into the two categories of male and female. You follow that, guys? For the male, it's masculinity. For the female, it's femininity. And God never intended on the two to blend and match. I, 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 see, guys, I want you to settle this. Please settle this. God is not looking for you as men, as us as men, to know our feminine side. He didn't give you a feminine side. He gave you a masculine side. Just like with the woman, he gave her a feminine side because there is a role that he assigned her in creation. There's a role he assigned you in creation as a man. So the only side you need to get in contact with is your masculine side. And you don't do that in accordance to the ideologies of the world. You get in the Bible because guess what? The Bible tells us how to do it. What does it say? Number one, when we go to Ephesians. How are we to love our wives? As Christ loves the church. You want to know what it means to be a real man in today's side? Go read the Gospels. Read how Jesus was. Read how he was. You don't, you don't need to go look at Dr. Phil or, 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 or Steve Harvey or Kevin Samuel. You don't need to watch any of these people. No, you have a good, perfect person in the person of Jesus Christ. And that's what I'm trying to, I think we got to see that. So when we talk about this masculinity, we're not talking about something that the world assigns. These scientists are absolutely lunatics. Who came up with all of this? They, they think that masculinity is something that is assigned to a person or something that, is ch that you can choose. No. Do you know they're absolutely denying the science because they recognize now through science that a man, what makes a man absolutely can be tested scientifically. It's according to how God balanced the hormonal distribution in the man versus how he balanced the hormonal distribution in the woman. God did that. So do you know there are certain hormonal chemicals that are released in me? I have something called testosterone. Okay, did the science put that there? Did, did, did God give any of these men here uh, 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 where they didn't have none of the testosterone but when we came old, uh, when, we, when we were born the doctor injected us with it to make us be a man. No, God put that in you and it's released on a full level basis in every male. Just like anybody know what did he give women? Estrogen. Somebody said, yeah, but you gotta be careful because men have estrogen too in very small amounts. That is not what, just like with a woman, she has a very small amount of testosterone. This is why you can't make a man be a woman later on down in life. That's just that's crazy. Because guess what? If you've been spending 20 years having testosterone released into your body, now you flip over and say you're now a, a, a woman, where did all the testosterone, testosterone go? Oh, I'm taking testosterone blockers. That doesn't matter because guess what? God has designed it on a scientific level where we can actually prove that masculinity, please y'all hear me as I'm closing. Masculinity was given to us as men is by God. And to absolutely deny that masculinity is to deny what God has righteously created us to be. Now, am I saying that we need to get in that Bible to understand how to express it? We do. Because if we're not careful, we'll let the world and sin express that masculinity in ways that are what? 
destructive to our family, destructive to our kids, and absolutely destructive, destructive to our wife. We, we don't want to be the Adam man rolling our wife under the bus. Now think about it. Literally, when you look at what Adam did, he left Eve alone to handle God. Because who did God go to first? He went to Adam. And what did Adam say? Man, that woman you gave me, pretty much made get her. He left Eve to face God. Threw her completely under. Is that an expression of masculinity, guys? No. No. Don't be that type of man. And I know it's difficult. We know it's very difficult for us to bear, bear the brunt of everything that go wrong. And hopefully your wife won't always throw that at you all the time. <laughs> but it's the truth. Dad, I don't like it. <laughs> but when stuff go wrong in your family, it's you. Start with us. Do I like that? No. Is that fair all the time? N no. But just like the woman said, well, we got the curse of marital problems. Just like if you read the Bible, what was the curse on the woman? Well, because you wanted to usurp your authority on the man, your curse will be you're going to have marital conflict. Now that, that, that <laughs> see, the woman will throw up to us, and she's rightfully so. It's your fault why everything going wrong. Yeah, but it's your fault we argue. <laughs> see, it's equally put down there like that. But us as men, we got to recognize, hey, we bear that responsibility. And look at what we're seeing in society. We don't see men taking responsibility for anything. We, we talk about the LGBT play <laughs> because that's, that's, that's being. We've allowed that foolishness to happen. When you have people, stars get on television and talking about my son, my daughter, my son came to me at 12 and told me, you know, he no longer wants to identify as being a boy. He wants to identify as being a girl. And, and I had to read up on this because I wanted to accommodate him. Oh, my. When, when is a man supposed to be accommodated? I, if I went to my father at 12 and said, Dad, I, I don't want y'all to call me John anymore. I want to be Janetta. I don't know if I could have got it out of my mouth. I, I mean, I'm just being real. Come on, y'all. You don't have to be afraid. You know what I'm saying. Dad, you're not allowing Glenn to come with you. I want to be Glinda. A who? I'm going to get your body. No. What we, that, but now we have a society where the men are saying, I want to be confirming to that. I want to allow you to be you. Guys, you know we've left the reservation. Am I saying, guys, we're not going to have people who struggle in this kind of stuff? No. But what I'm telling you, us, us as men, we got to stand firm and recognize that the masculinity is expressed when we truly understand how God has created us to be. And when I see how society is, I think it is a slippery slope that has always been there because guess what? We see the decline of the men. The men are no longer acting like men. We're not protect. It should be the men rising up trying to protect women's sports from these transgender men who want to jump in there and take over. It should be the men rising up. I can only imagine if I had a female daughter on that swim team and I see this big old grown joker jumping in this pool swimming against my daughter. They would have to almost stop me from jumping in that pool beating that boy up. But I identify as a woman. I'm a woman, man. I would. And I, my daughter even got a scholarship. She done worked her behind off to be a good swimmer and you gonna come in here and take all her awards. Is that fair, guys? No. Is that, that's not fair at all. You know, and so this is what we're saying. That's when the men are no longer stepping up and rising up. And I think it begins with us understanding who we are in Christ. Don't be ashamed of your masculinity. Get in the Bible and let, the, let Christ shape it. But I think that's one of the main things that we see in society where we're letting the world define all this. Get in touch with your feminine side. Be more sensitive. Learn how to cry. Learn how to do it. I'm not saying you can't cry. I didn't say that. But, but cry for reasons. You, know, you lost a loved one. Not crying because <laughs> your money ain't right. And you're, you know, <laughs> you sitting over there and laying in your spouse's lap all day and you can't get up and get yourself together. No, you got to be the strength of that family. We all have to. We all have to. Somebody said, well, what about the women? No, this is what the men. We got to do what we need to do. So I'm telling you guys, I hope you heard this. If you want to read any of those articles about that gender stupidity, you can. I didn't even go over all of it. It's absolutely insane when you're reading what's going on in our culture.
But I think today, as we look at today for Men's Day and uh, Father's Day, we need our fathers to rise up. We do. We need us to rise up. And it starts right there in your home, right there in your home. I don't care if you're a grandfather with your grandkids, uncles, your kids are grown. Most of our kids are not grown. We got to rise up, man, and help these men be men. Because I'm telling you, we have a generation between the, the millennial and the Y generation, especially the Y generation. They don't know how to be men. They don't know how to handle the pressures of life. I'm telling you, I love, I love my son, but he doesn't know how to handle the pressures of life. We got to teach them that. Some of you guys know what I'm talking about. These young guys, they don't know how to pray because there's some of you who have handled the pressures of life. Women, the older generation of women will tell you the women were able to handle the pressures of life. These women today, they can't handle the pressure of life. Uh, well, Lindsay, mom always said, you can do what I did. Raise four kids and go to school. That's saying, Lindsay, like, you're probably right because right. we couldn't do what the men did. Well, I worked, I did this, I did this, and I played with the kids, and I came home and did this. Well, I'm tired. I want to play video game. Play video game? No. If you want to play video games, you play it on a time when you've done your part. You, you, you take away from yourself to play it. Y'all get what I mean? You got to give it. Like, you know, everybody gone. Everybody sleep. Everybody, you've done your part. And now you still away and play. Now when you're supposed to be working, it's in the middle of the day, you two o'clock, man. You on the chat line playing Madden. <laughs> And your wife come on with the bands, come in, sit everything down. Get out the way! Get out the way! <laughs> now she ought to take that game and throw it on the ground and break it. <laughs> so guys, <laughs> I'm telling you, man, we got a lot of work to do, but it starts with just talking about it, and I kind of want to do it, so... Hope you guys are blessed today. I hope you have a good time celebrating with your father. If your father is there with you, that is a testament that yeah, he's, he's that real dad, that real father. And because we have a lot of people out there who have the role of father and they're not fathers. Any child, any father that will let their child go the way of the world and have no say about it. Guys, that's not a father. But we thank God that in EPF and the men that we know, especially the men I know in my life, they are true expressions of what fathers are. And we want to celebrate them. Celebrate them. Because guess what? We can define what a father is. We can say what a man is, and we want to do it in accordance to what God is saying. So I hope you have a blessed day on today. Hope you enjoy spending time with Dad, and we'll see you on Wednesday. God bless you.